Water White, Book One, Chapter Three. With wild dogs behind her, Celeste kept her focus to the south as she ran. She would not look back. She passed barren fields and ramshackle houses, many half buried on their ruptured lots, and didn't recognize anything. This was not her home. Even the distant snow covered mountains looked different. The peaks seemed to lean unnaturally, as if the mounds of stone beneath them were resting precariously on enormous invisible floor jacks. The vision was unsettling, but she had no time to wonder about such things. Mine, she heard a voice growl. The pack was gaining on her. Straight ahead was a fence and an expansive field and what looked like a barn beyond it. Rather than turn around, Celeste focused all her attention on the five-foot fence in front of her and determined she could jump to the top rail and leap to the other side. She hoped the fence would slow down the dogs, even just a little, to give her a chance to make it to the barn. If she could get that far, there would be protection from the hungry animals. But instead of leaping to the top rail, Celeste cleared the fence and never broke stride when she landed several yards on the other side. Holy moly, she shouted to the wind, still running and gaining speed with each step, which baffled her. Trick, barked one from the pack. How? howled another as the distance grew between him and his prey. I can do this, Celeste responded in her mind as the barn grew closer. A small pond threatened to make her change direction, which would slow her down, but her astonishing leap over the fence gave her confidence to try for the other side. With a powerful stride, she launched herself over the 20-foot water hole getting only one foot wet when she landed. Her eyes focused on a small door ahead. It had to be open. It was her only chance for defense against the pursuing pack. Crashing against it, she fumbled for the door latch, and when it opened, threw herself inside and back against the door, bolting it closed from the inside. Within moments, Dogs were hurling themselves at the door and sides of the barn, trying to get in. Away! Away! Celeste screamed as loudly as she could. The intensity of her voice frightened her, and for a brief instant, all but her beating heart was silent. Then, one by one, she heard voices from different members of the pack. What are you? More silence followed as Celeste considered her situation. Everything was bizarre and incredible. She was wide awake in a world that made no sense. She had somehow developed the ability to move in ways that defied gravity, and as much as she had fought against the idea, she could hear animals speak. She was pretty sure they could understand her, too. What do you mean, what are you? I'm a girl, she shouted. Leave me alone. But the voices persisted. What girl are you? Celeste wasn't sure how to answer. She sensed her situation had changed, but remained leaning against the barred door, just in case. My name's Celeste Araya Nolan, and I ran away from the home. Now leave me alone. She hoped her demand would send them off to find dinner elsewhere. Celeste! 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 She heard her name make its way through the pack. 
And then two words from a different voice. Come out. Are they crazy? Celeste thought when she heard the words. It was not a demand. It did not sound aggressive. It was a request. Still, moments earlier, she had been hunted down for what would have been a disappointing meal. Tell me why I should come out. Why should I trust you? She spoke in her most authoritative tone. Because you are Celeste and we have been waiting for you, came her answer. Years earlier, the dogs had not understood why the one-eyed wizard had chosen them to protect Celeste. The old man had appeared to them soon after the event. Although they had initially assumed an aggressive stance when the man approached, something in the piercing gaze of his one eye told them the stranger was no threat. Two black ravens followed him, circling above when he stopped. There will be a girl whose name is Celeste Ryan Nolan, the man spoke to them in a language they understood. You must protect her until she finds her wings. Take her to the mountain and tell her she must go to the other side of the big water. The mysterious man walked away without waiting for a response, fading from sight after taking only several steps. The dogs had exchanged confused looks before resuming their search for food but the name Celeste was forever emblazoned in their minds. Against Celeste's better judgment, and because she couldn't stay in the barn forever, she slid the bolt from its latch. Breathing deeply with eyes closed and chin up, she reached for the handle of yet another door through which she would step into another unknown Opening her eyes and willing herself to be courageous, Celeste stepped into the light. Before her sat five sinewy dogs, with not an ounce of spare fat on any of them. The largest sat at the front. Compassion filled her heart as she looked at each of the mottled creatures. She moved, one hand outstretched, to the lead dog. He sniffed her hand briefly and flipped it with, her no with his nose so her hand rested on his head. The dog leaned into her as she petted him, and soon there was whimpering throughout the pack. I don't understand, said Celeste as she made her way through the pack, petting each in turn. Why are you here? What do you expect from me? I'm just a girl. We expect nothing. We must take you near the big water. You must go to the other side, spoke the leader. Confused by the response, Celeste took a moment to gaze around before looking back at the hungry animals. She reached into her bag and offered what remained of her crackers to each dog. She set the three remaining apples on the ground. I'm going into that house, she pointed to the damaged structure next to the barn. Its upper windows were broken, bricks from the chimney littered the cracked roof, and the front porch hung from the house at a precarious angle. Maybe I can find more food, and you can tell me what you're talking about. Although it felt as if the day had just begun, the sun's angle indicated dusk was fast approaching. Darkness would soon follow. Hunger and fatigue settled in her body, and she longed for a bed. Tonight we watch, at dawn we leave, said the leader. What's your name? asked Celeste, as if it were perfectly natural to be conversing with animals. Ranger, said the dog. It was the name she had given her fat puppy long ago. 
The animals followed at a distance in a semicircle as Celeste made her way to the house behind the barn. The door was open and she stepped inside, no longer afraid. Hello, she bellowed, walking boldly through the house. Anybody home? She neither got nor expected an answer and soon found the kitchen. She also didn't expect to find the rickety cabinets filled with canned goods, but there they were, shelves of soups and beans and vegetables. Ravenous, she found a can opener in the scattered pile of utensils on the floor, grabbed and opened a chunky beef stew and devoured it. Then she, she searched for food appropriate for her new posse and was not disappointed. The previous owners, whoever and wherever they were, had owned at least one dog. Where are they? She asked Ranger after spreading out a feast for the famished dogs. And what's happened here? Where are we? We have no answers, he replied. Noise, movement, people gone, things gone. Eat and sleep now. We leave early. You must gather your powers. Without waiting for her next question, Ranger turned to the other dogs. Wordlessly, they dispersed around the house. Facing north, Ranger crouched on his haunches at the front of the house. Thank you, Celeste whispered before heading back inside. Ranger didn't reply, but Celeste saw him tilt his head. He heard her. Night fell quickly and within moments of falling into a dusty bed, Celeste was asleep. She had no idea what perils dawn would bring. That ends chapter three of Water White, book one.